Hi, my name is Dr. Scott Coffin. I am a research scientist at the California State Water Resources Control Board. Today I'll be talking about assessing risks of microplastics in drinking water for humans. Insights from California's expert workshop. In 2017, the first study to monitor for microplastics in tap water found such particles in 83% of samples worldwide and 94% of samples in the United States. Findings of microplastics in drinking water, as well as an increasing public awareness for our exposure, prompted the California State Legislature to pass Senate Bill 1422 in 2018. This requires the California State Water Resources Control Board to first define microplastics by July 1st of 2020, and by July 1st of 2021, we are required to adopt a standardized method for monitoring, accredit laboratories, adopt a health-based guidance level to aid consumers in interpreting concentrations in drinking water, and conduct four years of testing and monitoring. In this talk, I will be discussing our consideration of a health-based guidance level for microplastics. While it's been known since 1960 that plastic particles can be absorbed into mammalian tissues following ingestion, human health hazards are poorly understood. In 2019, the science advice for policy by European academies and the World Health Organization evaluated the science regarding the potential human health impacts of microplastics in drinking water. Findings from these assessments were largely inconclusive, with Sapia stating that the absence of evidence of microplastics risks currently does not allow one to conclude that risk is either present or absent with sufficient certainty. In other words, we don't know. Since these reports, the total number of microplastics hazard studies for mammals has tripled. We critically assessed the literature through an expert workshop and evaluated toxicity data to inform risk assessments for both drinking water and aquatic ecosystems. If you'd like to learn more about the aquatic ecosystem risk assessment, be sure to catch Dr. Alvina Mahinto's talk here at SeaTac. Our expert group concluded that significant data gaps prevent the reliable assessments of risks for microplastics in drinking water, suggesting that the California state government consider adopting a non-regulatory screening level. Our group identified three classes of problems that prevent us from recommending a microplastics regulation in drinking water. This includes an inadequate effects database in which most studies did a poor job characterizing the particles and used a limited variety of polymers, shapes, and sizes, as well as unknown effect mechanisms, which as you'll see are necessary for an extrapolation to diverse particle types and incomplete exposure data uh, with very limited information on our exposure through food. We identified two distinct ways in which microplastics can be toxic, including chemical and particle-based hazards. Microplastic particles often contain toxic additives, with over 2,400 known substances of concern added to plastics. Of these, 53% are currently unregulated, and 11% have no scientific references. Thus, assessing chemical hazards is a challenging and unique exercise, and should be conducted separately from the assessment of particle-based hazards. In this assessment, we did not quantitative, quantitatively assess the chemical-based toxicities of microplastics to humans. Instead, we focused mostly on the particle hazard traits. Our working group developed screening criteria for assessing the reliability of studies, with three categories of criteria applied, including experimental design, particle characterization, and risk assessment applicability. Starting with 29 rodent ingestion studies for microplastics, we identified 12 studies deemed fit for purpose for risk assessment. We then consulted outside experts to inform us of the reliabilities of these studies. While all screening criteria are important, we identified a subset of criteria to be of minimum importance for this assessment. Approximately 40% of studies could not be used for dose response assessment due to their use of fewer than three exposure concentrations. Of the 12 studies evaluated by subject matter experts, the majority of reliable endpoints in the database focus on impacts to male reproduction. 
These studies show consistent effects across a range of particle sizes. However, to have a more clear understanding of the potential human health effects, we need more information on additional endpoints and organs. For microplastics, the linkages between mechanisms and observed effects in rodents are not well understood. This makes extrapolation of effects observed in a single particle type to a diversity of microplastics highly uncertain. Adverse outcome pathways are lacking for microplastics, but some commonly observed mechanisms in our study include reactive oxygen species, oxidative stress, inflammation, cell death, lipid metabolism, and energy metabolism. Dose responses of critical effects were modeled using benchmark dose modeling software. Point of departures for each critical effect are shown here with different color points corresponding to different studies and error bars representing 95% confidence intervals. The most sensitive effect was for anti-Mullerian hormone concentration, which is a biomarker related to female reproductive impacts. We also observed a similar range of concentrations in which other effects occur, especially male reproductive impacts such as sperm viability and maturity. Deriving a drinking water threshold requires understandings of relative exposure. While numerous studies have documented microplastics concentrations in foodstuffs such as salt and fish, significant data gaps exist for the majority of foods in people's diets, such as grains, vegetables, and meat. Additionally, data that are available will me were measured using non-harmonized methods, thus limiting their comparability. Finally, we don't have any exposure data for Californians. In lieu of having full exposure data, we assumed that drinking water contributes 30% relative source contribution for microplastics. To convert a daily body weight adjusted critical dose to a drinking water level, we back calculate the drinking water level that would exceed this reference dose using an assumed relative source contribution from drinking water of 20% and an average drinking water intake rate for Californians. Using these values, we arrived at a non-regulatory drinking water screening level of 160 nanograms per liter. Please note that this value is based on a study using 0.5 micron polystyrene spheres. And humans are exposed to a diversity of microplastics in sizes, shapes, and colors. So we need some way to relate that diversity of microplastics that humans are exposed to, to these mono dispersed laboratory effect studies. Microplastics in the environment are highly diverse, while laboratory studies are typically conducted with a single type of particle. To extrapolate from a mass-based threshold for a 0.5 micron polystyrene sphere to a diversity of environmental microplastics, we can apply alignments developed by workshop participant Dr. Bart Coleman's. To align these data, one must first consider which particle metric is driving the toxicity, such as the volume or the total surface area. This is not known for microplastics, thus representing a significant point of uncertainty. Since probability distributions for size, shape, and density are well characterized for microplastics in drinking water, once an exposure metric relevant to toxicity is known, we can, extract, we can extrapolate effects for a single particle type to a diversity of particle types. In addition to the relevant exposure metric, an adjustment for bioavailability needs to be employed in this method as well. We know that particles larger than 10 microns are unlikely to be taken up into the gut, uh, so we excluded these particles from our alignment. The nanoparticle to toxicity literature suggests that surface area strongly predicts inflammation across size ranges and particle types. It is unclear which exposure metric best predicts the observed effects in rodents for microplastics, and additional research is needed. We applied multiple alignments and chose the lowest value to be used as a conservative, non-regulatory drinking water screening level. As highlighted, the mass-based alignment resulted in the lowest possible value of 640 particles per liter, again extrapolated from 0.5 micron polystyrene spheres. We tested the sensitivity of our screening level derivation based on realistic and known variabilities in the determinant factors. Relative source contribution through drinking water was determined to be the most sensitive parameter, reinforcing the need for accurate and holistic exposure data. Through this effort, we developed an interactive R-Shiny data visualization tool and database called Tomex. The, the app allows users to explore mammalian microplastics toxicity data, 
harmonize the reporting of effects, explore the database in tabular format, generate summary statistics for different effects data, and explore study screening quality criteria. This app will soon be free and open to the public, and we intend for researcher, researchers to be able to upload toxicity database to toxicity to this database. To learn more, make sure to tune in to Dr. Leah Thornton Hampton's presentation at CTAC. In conclusion, we identified four major recommendations to reduce uncertainties in assessing microplastics risks to humans through drinking water. The first is to characterize exposure through all sources, determine the mechanisms of toxicity, including elucidating the toxicologically relevant exposure metric, and study additional endpoints and characterize particles in toxicity studies. I'd like to thank the participants in the expert working group and the co-authors on our manuscript as listed here. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to connecting with you on Twitter.